Okay, so we're live, we're recording. Um, welcome everybody to the Workhouse Arts Center very first virtual second Saturday art walk. My name is Mina and I work in the marketing department at the Workhouse. And I think that all of you guys, as well as all of us at the Workhouse, we know how important the arts are for our mental and emotional well-being, as well as living life creatively. And because you aren't able to come to us right now, we wanted to bring our art walk to you. And so we've spent the last week or so um, trying to figure all of this out. And as many of you heard, we're still figuring it out as we go. But anyway, um, we're excited to bring this to you tonight. And uh, like I said, we're recording the Zoom call so that we can post it on social media and different platforms, YouTube later. Um, if uh, any Zoom bombers come in and anything starts to go awry, and if you don't know what a Zoom bomber is, Google that later. <laughs> I don't want to get into it right now. Yeah, no, I'll kick them out. Okay, good. We got Dale to like kick them out. So. So yeah, if we're, if we're not able to kick anybody out and it starts to get too crazy, we'll just shut it down. But since Dale's here and he's got a good grasp on things, I think we'll be fine. Um, well, so that's what he tells himself. <laughs> okay. So quickly, if you're not familiar with the Workhouse, um, we're an innovative collaboration of visual arts, performing arts, exhibitions, education, um, resident artists, community events, all located in Virginia with, uh, on a historical site. So for anybody that's not aware of what we do, that's what we do. And our second Saturday art walk um, is held monthly on the second Saturday of each month. And uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for our community, um, artists, art lovers to join together and tour the tour the galleries meet our artists see what they see what they're doing um perhaps see demos um have uh, listen to them talk about their work we have uh opening receptions often on second saturday and um it's in the evening uh with campus hours extended so that people can come and it's a great community event um, and so again, uh, often there's group shows that happen. Uh, we always have featured artists every month. And this month we were supposed to have a theme of the cherry blossoms uh, because uh, the cherry blossom festival would have been going on right now. Um, and we were actually listed in Northern Virginia Magazine uh, for one of the cherry blossom events for uh, this year. So. We still have some cherry blossom artwork that we're going to be showing, um, but we also needed to get some other artists in uh, to play with this experiment. And so we have Marnie and Nadine live with us this evening. Um, so thank you, ladies, very much for joining us um, because, you know, the art walk is a live thing normally, and we wanted some uh, people to be there live. And tonight, uh, while we're doing some cherry blossom uh, related work. We also, one of our artists, um, when we had a meeting two weeks ago, said, you know, this is a great arts healing power hour time. And so we're kind of looking at it from that perspective, where we're taking some time to um, get away from all the craziness that's happening and immerse ourselves in some beautiful artwork and creative inspiration and hear what these artists are doing uh, during this time. And so we're here to also relieve some stress and benefit our mental and emotional health. And so we've got a great lineup. Um, we, like I said, we've got two artists, Marnie, Mar, is it Marnie, Mari or Marie? Marie. Marie. So we got Marnie, Marie. You know your own artist, and, your director. And we have Nadine ah. Thola. Both will be talking about their work that we're going to show in just a little she bit. Knows. We've got a slideshow um of uh, the cherry blossom related art and we've got a video from patty rice uh showing her quarantine setup in i believe she said myrtle beach mm -hmm. so normally at an art walk if you've never been to one we often have uh receptions with wine and cheese or there's drinks snacks so feel free to grab a cocktail your snacks and sit <laughs> back and uh we're gonna go ahead and get going with some healing arts here 
So first up, we've got Marnie Marie. Um, as, as part of one of my things that I do is I manage social media for the workhouse and right as everything was starting to shut down here in the DC area, I noticed on Instagram, uh, some work from Marnie, uh, that she was posting and I was really struck at just how well it was representing everything going on, uh, the current environment that we're living in. And so... Let's all welcome Marnie, and she's gonna. We're gonna take a look at her work, and I'm gonna pull it up here, and she's going to tell us about it. So let me. All see right. Now, hold on. All right, this will take a minute. Mm. Okay, hold on. Let me get it open here. So, all right. So I think, uh, uh, Mina, if you, if you, in real quick, Marnie, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe one way of doing this uh, is if folks want to make a comment, they can just click on that reaction button at the bottom of the screen and just use the uh, hand that looks like this. And then we'll, that way they can make a comment. Is that okay? That sounds great to me. Okay, so here we go with some of Marnie's work. And so Marnie, feel free to tell us, uh, first of all, introduce yourself, um, tell us uh, what building you're in, the mediums you work in, and then we can start to get into the pieces that we have here for you. Hey, I'm Marnie Murray. I'm a water, mostly watercolor artist, but I also do some oil painting, and I'm in Building 5, Studio 509, and I've been there since 2008, right when we opened up. The, this piece right here is something it's probably one of the last things I did in my studio. I got it started there. I had a little visitor about five years old and she told me she was an artist. So I let her draw on this little square and she drew that little person that you can see. So I told her I would do something with it and then come back, come back in a week or two and see what it looks like. Oh, now I can't see her. So. This is what I did with it. And her name was Rebecca, as you can see. So that's just watercolor and ink. And it was just kind of playing around with what she put on the paper for. Awesome. Okay, and then let's go to the next one. Let's see. So these are a bunch of square watercolor papers that I had left over from one of my classes. Every time I ripped up the paper for the class, I had a square left over, so I saved them. So now I'm just doing abstracts and I'm not really an abstract artist. And it, it's just been fun playing with them and there's just little pieces of paper. So I just play with different things. So this one has, I guess it's mostly watercolor and color pencil. And I, I don't, I just start coloring on them and this is what happened. There's some iridescent paint in there too. And how big are these, Marnie? These are all five by five inches. Okay. And uh, is this one part of your Corona art series that you've been doing? Yes, it's called Circle of Hope. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so they became my Corona series because the titles just kind of took on titles that had something to do with what was happening during this time. They did. And that's what struck me was like the, just the feeling I was getting from looking at them on Instagram. I, I was like, this is exactly what all this feels like right now. It's called Stay in Your Own Square. <laughs> this, was, this happened in the beginning and I really didn't set out to do I don't know. I didn't know what I set out to do, but this has been, and that title seemed appropriate for it. And I'm, I'm noticing that some of your work has like a kind of an iridescent look, and is that the actual paint that you're using? Yeah, I do have a, a little palette of uh, iridescent paint that I call bling, so every once in a while I'll add some of that. Okay, great. Okay. And this is called. Um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I've <it's>, been there. 
loved ones gather online because of all of our Zoom calls. And, you know, we've had family Zoom time every week and it's been fun. And they all kind of start out the same way as we started out. Right. Now the, the technology. So this is loved ones gather online. Cool. I like how you've got the little hearts connected um, with the, is that ink or is that paint also? Paint. Like okay. Right now the tube. They're kind of a dimensional paint. Very nice. Okay, and then this last one. And this is cupcake with the cherry on top because some neighbors have been sharing treats with each other. So that's what this is. Very nice. And is, this is all, every, all of these are watercolor, correct? For the most I part. I start out with watercolor and then I add sometimes acrylic or color pencil or watercolor pencil. Okay. And so you said normally, uh, typically you're not an abstract artist. So what is your, what, typically what kind of work are you doing? I do more representational watercolors. Or okay. Water. Okay. Well, after all of uh, this is over tonight, um, next Tuesday, we'll have a web page up, not only with um, this work, but also with links to your page, Marnie, that's um, on our website. And if you could tell us now how people can find you, um, whether it's online or social media, that would be great. My website is moniemarie.com. And I, it's a new website, so go visit that. I just put all of these on there. And on Instagram or Facebook, you can find me at Marnie Marie Paints. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marnie. And I have to thank both Marnie and uh, Nadine uh, profusely because they were not scheduled to be featured artists for April. And they both just kind of jumped in and we literally kind of pulled this together over the course of two days or so to, so that we could get this to happen and, and have it done um, fairly well. So, okay. I just want to say thank you. I know a lot of you on here and thanks for coming to see us. And thanks for inviting me to be of one of Of course. Them. Thank you, Marnie. Okay, so now we've got Nadine coming up. And Nadine uh, graciously answered the call to be on um, our Zoom today. And she's got several things and I'm hoping she's still here. Yep, I'm yeah. here. There you are, yay. We had trouble getting Nadine on earlier and so it's very exciting <laughs> that it all worked out like literally at the last minute. Um, yeah, my, my, um, my son and my husband are both technical um, gurus. Uh, they work in the industry and they go, oh, mom, you're not as technical. And I was like, well, considering I work with fourth and 17th century, um, <laughs> you know, techniques, I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> there you go. So we've got, so Nadine, um, we've got some of her work and then we've got some demo videos um of and tell me if i'm saying this right pisanki egg pisanki they're Pisanki's ukrainian egg. easter eggs great so we'll start with this piece right here actually tell us a little bit more about yourself um uh, so um i'm um, mixed media i do a variety of things um i uh studied iconography um since i was 16 years old i was very lucky to have uh teachers in the church um being born and raised in russian orthodox church this time of year my ukrainian orthodox um you know this it's easter for for everybody but uh the russian orthodox and, the, and all eastern orthodoxers um because of uh the way that uh the calendar goes our easter this year is is next week so this is palm sunday this this week so if you were a ukrainian orthodox or any you know um serbian um american greek you know uh, you're this our holy week is coming up and um being very busy so um in the russian section um we do a lot of eggs you would have been doing pisanki eggs for a week um my icons you can see i'm in building 10 usually in um studio 104 which used to be the showers in our in our um in our our building um here i know you guys can't see it very well but um the russians also uh have a have egg um necklaces that they wear on easter um and uh so i uh, studied a lot that i just um traditionally 
eggs were um icons were done in wax which you saw in the the catacombs with the early christians they then the next in modern technology was egg tempera. Um, I'm allergic to eggs, so after five years of breaking out, I did. I, I switched over to acrylics and iconography and started exploring um, all the different mediums icons can be done in. So um, the piece you see right now was in a show a couple of years ago. Um, it was a featured. It's actually done on a rock. Uh, Greeks um, will paint on rocks, on shingles, on on planks, on kind of anything that they can find considering that there's a lot of them are seaboard kind of, you know their cities are on the seaboard um, they kind of use whatever is available um, so uh, this particular one is a, a Greek style um, the Romanians um, use uh, reverse painting on glass when the when the glass factories came to Romania the the Germans showed them how to do that um, so uh, I've been studying, you know, not only in wood and, and enamels and porcelain and um, there's a variety of, of mediums for icons. Um, primarily, you know, the work that I do for the churches, which is in the back and you saw on the announcement on, on Facebook and in the, um, I, uh, I work on a Jessa board with acrylics and they start off as a drawing. Um, these drawings have very, um, canon rules and so the idea is that we're the kind of the brush of god you know we're not doing the work we're just the tool and um we uh so when we do it we're actually any of our icons are uh paint prayer in paint form so um in a lot of ways if you go to the the next one i think yeah so the next one is um i uh found out that a lot now that communism has fell. There's a lot of different ways that I'm finding out about Russians working on different materials. Um, this is actually done, the acrylics on a um, turquoise bead that's about an inch and inch and a half. Um, and that was sold at our collect. Uh, so I like the idea that I can not only um, you know, work for the churches, but bring it more accessible to everybody else. That's awesome. Um, and then the next one that you see is one of the miracle icons. We talked, about, you had said about healing arts. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that we don't venerate the boards or the icons themselves. We, we um, represent, we, we venerate and pray to the people that they're, um, that they're made to. Um, so this one is um, from Mount Athos and I actually have some of the myrrh where it, it actually bled on the screen you see there you can kind of see on on the box that they put in the icon weeps so much that the myrrh covers the icon covers the the glass covers the whole box um i've seen father bring it out and he'll literally just hold it and then it drips and so we get the blessings of that so um it's very in in our age um i've been present to about three or four miracle icons um the idea is that they're the healing icons and that to let us know that God is with us and that the saints and the Virgin Mary or the Theotokos, mm -hmm. Theotokos is the word God, um, mother of God in Greek. Uh, so the Theotokos is with us and healing us and interceding for us. Cool. Okay. So the next one, um, this time of year, um, growing up, you can't, my mother, um, grew in a community where, um, various egg artists would Put their eggs in baskets. Um, these are some of the ones that she had commissioned, um, and some open. Um, the one with the little church bell was um, a fundraiser for when St. Nicholas Cathedral down here in D.C. was trying to raise money for their for the church bells. The ladies' groups were um, traditionally all these kind of eggs plus the pisanki that you see in the front um, would have been in baskets. And I can remember as a girl. Um, the priests would go around and pick up the really more ornate ones. And some of the priests back in Pennsylvania had these incredible um, collections. And you can see um, collections of different eggs up at St. Tikhon's Monastery in, in South Canaan, Pennsylvania. But this is part of my mom's collection. Great. 
Okay. The and that is just a little bit more close up. Um, the Romanians put beads on eggs. Um, uh, the Russians um, paint them. So the, the first one on the left is um, again the Theotokos and Child. The little you know they cut eggs out like you see the little chick and pussy wallows because. Um, in Russia, there was no palms. So on Palm Sunday, if you go to a Russian or Slavic uh, church, you'll be given pussy wallows instead of palms. Um, the next two, the one that's white and red, and then the yellow, I mean the red and orange one, are actually wooden eggs. So um, in the demo that I'm going to be showing, the blue one is wax resist, the one that my grandmother showed me since I've been 13. But you can use the same thing with paint or with the red one you, I did with markers. So you could do it with kids. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to have the fire and, no. and, and everything you can use, wooden eggs and paint. Um, so, you know, you, you, you know, these are, you know, they're wood, so it's easier to do. Um, and then uh, the blue one in front is, is like the one that you'll see in the demo where we, um, these would be hard boiled, you would, put them in um, the basket, all different colors. Um, we don't, the, the ones that would not be consumed use the Ukrainian dyes, which you'll see, um, cause they're toxic, but the, we use like paz and the food colors for the ones that go in the basket and at midnight after the services are done, um, we have a feast about two o'clock in the morning with the whole community. And the eggs would be one of the things. In the Greek culture, they have, um, it's just a solid red. Great. Okay, well, let's check out some of your demo videos now. So this is um, the ones in the back. The red one's a crepe egg the, that my, my son did when he was about four. Um, the purple one is just a little styrofoam that I beat it in. Um, if you take a pen and put it, um, a, a flat hand pen and put it into, um, you know, a, uh, just into a, a pencil um you can just by dipping into the paint it's called drop um and pull that's the technique that both the wax you can see now i moved to a finishing nail you can use any any kind of um uh anything that has um you could lose like the styluses with the little balls on the front anything that you can dip that's, um, we used to call it the simple pisanki. My grandmother and my great grandparents came from Austria Hungary. So, this, um, they're now the Ukrainians um, are the ones that have made it really popular and marketed a lot. Um, but all the Slavic countries would do that. So, the next one um, is this is a, um, a nice little, uh, it's called. Um, a Pisanki, um, it was a kit by Extra Art Studios on, on um, Etsy. And it, and, um, when we were growing up, we would take a lid and put it on the stove and it would be very dangerous, especially, you know, with kids. So um, and it's E-G-G-S-T-R Art Studio. Um, they made this where you can take, you know, a tea um, candle and heat up the wax and uh, you can buy these kits on there. Um, anyway, I, if you have like a melter or a hot pot, you can, anything that you can, you can use to do it. So what you dip, the, whether it's the pen, the nail, um, a stylus, um, you never scratch off because if you scratch, then when it goes to dip into the wax, then um, you'll see that area. And you can see the first two right now, I'm going over the, um, the first two ones that wasn't quite warm enough for the wax. And so I just went over them. And then I was looking at that going, hmm, you might not even need this contraption. Um, if you melt down the, the tea candle, then you can, you, you could either, you, if you want um, it white and then put it into a, um, and it's a little harder to see, but you'll see like a little bit um, later that it, it, you have the, the bumps of the wax and um, everything's done either like with a V formation or like round circles, the idea of rebirth and spring and life. And um, so every, you can't get more than one stroke 
out of everything, whether it's in paint or with the uh, wax. Um, so you, you dip and, and stroke and dip and stroke and dip and stroke. And, and the so next one is the, red, is, is the red paint or is it? Wax? Okay. So in the kit, they actually, it's red wax. Okay. And, um, we, what I usually use are bee wax eggs, which you can kind of see the bumps on there. Uh, if you use white wax, it will be the, whatever you, um, do will be the color of the egg. Yeah. That particular red is um, colored wax. If you don't have, you know, the fancy colored wax, just take your regular candle. Um, we, I use old uh, Easter candles because for a week we would have been in church with candles and you could add a little bit of crayon to it and um, that will make it colored. Um, and you can see how like this egg here, it'll be um, the, it, it, the white you see right there it keeps the white so it's a resist and then um unfortunately because i use a a, um, a blown out egg <laughs> um it didn't take it's been sitting here in my thing so after you take it out of the um the dye you want to pat it so that it comes more um, consistent with the egg mm -hmm. dye, you just kind of roll it. And then um, these would be fit enough to give to friends or give away in, in your baskets. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much, um, you could do it in any service I've done, you know, wax on wood surfaces too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nadine, thank you so yeah. much for sharing all of that. And um, can you tell everybody how they can find you? Um, I'm on um, Instagram as Nadine K as in Kite Zola. Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, I ha I'm um, Nadine um, KT Studio. And, uh, and hopefully when the workhouse opens again, you can come and see me in Building 10. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so next up, um, we're coming back to our original theme of cherry blossom art. And I've got some images here uh, from one of our artists, uh, C. May Yates, that we're just going to go through. C. May could not be with us tonight, uh, but this was art that she was going to actually have um, in her show this evening. Uh, had we been actually at the workhouse. And so this is titled Blue Jay in Spring. Her style is Chinese brush painting. This is 14 by 18. The thing about doing it here is we can't get a sense of how big these things are or how small, um, which of course is, you know, one of the things in seeing art live is that you get the energetic um, things happening from it, but you can also see what's happening in terms of the size. And so this is 14 by 18. Uh, si Mei was born um, in Taipei, Taiwan, and uh, she, uh, after she finished school, she was hired as an artist by the China Art Company, and so she developed and refined her technique there um, with many uh, renowned Chinese artists. This is Cherry Blossom Festival. This is eight by 10. And um, again, that Chinese brush painting style. And it's just gorgeous. I mean, it, it feels like it's got that fluffiness um, that the cherry blossoms have when you see them live. This is her uh, cherry blossom in DC. Again, eight by 10 and the Chinese brush painting. Um, her style also includes Sumi, Sumi -e ink and unique oriental brush strokes. Her reverence for different landscapes, flowers, birds, insects, and fish have inspired her painting. And she's an award-winning artist in the Virginia communities where she's lived. Um, and her love of nature is evident pretty much in all of her projects, which I think you guys can see. This is, um, let's see, Hummingbird Watch. Again, Chinese brush painting, and this is 12 by 16. And then this last one is Virginia State Flower and Birds. Um, this one is 25 by 30. So that's almost two feet, uh, well, over two feet by almost three feet. Um, and so Simei follows the Chinese philosophy, which encourages students to use their chi. Chi is energy, uh, your life force, basically. 
Um, and the, that philosophy is that the power comes from inside the artist and flows onto the rice paper. The goal is to achieve inner peace with oneself through the act of creating. The artist draws energy from the inner tranquility and translates it to the paper. The brush strokes are very important in the development of the picture. And so you can see in these gorgeous pieces the very intricate brushwork that's happening. And again, CMA's work will be on the web page that we're going to have live on Tuesday on our website. And um, for those of you that got the Zoom link through your email, we'll also have that link in our email that goes out on Tuesday as well. So next cool. up, um, let's see. We had a, a special piece from Anita Damron, and she was going to be on here to talk. Is Anita here? She is. All right. Anita. She's our surprise guest because uh, I saw her sign up and I was like, oh, you can talk about your piece. Excellent. There she is. Um, can, can, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Nina. Well, hi. This is a, uh, a tapestry style mosaic. It's a direct, direct uh, method in a setting bed mosaic. And I uh, first studied this type of work under Laurel Skye, who sadly has, has passed. Um, and then I kind of developed it into my own style. The idea is that it's a rug. It looks like a, a rug, a tapestry that you would hang on the wall. And the, uh, so you have the fringe, which is glass. That's, it's all hand cut glass. This is, and the glass is turned on and the, um, we use either a mortar or a mastic as an adhesive. And then we don't grout this mosaic. Like a lot of mosaics are grouted and uh, this is not grouted. Um, so we put the border in and uh, in the border, I've used some ball chain, which is uh, really fun. And um, there is Italian Milfiori from Murano, Italy. And the branches of the cherry, cherry blossom tree, um, you know, I, I created this piece after I, the last time I went to see the cherry blossoms in DC, they were just so beautiful. Uh, so these are actually Swarovski crystal beads that I found that are used. You can buy these uh, findings to create jewelry pieces, but this is like jewelry for the wall. So, so the, um, the branches are made from uh, crystals from the Czech Republic in a chain and then I added these other beads as findings and um, the glass leaves and the butterfly is an enamel piece and that's surrounded by a rhinestone chain. So the, the glass that's inlaid in the background is called, um, it's the crazy paving type of background that's a very common um, way of laying tile in mosaic. So it's mostly stained glass that I've used. And the glass, that glass all is made in the USA, family-owned factories. Great. And how big is this piece? It's, uh, this piece is in tradition of the way that Laurel had made her pieces. Is, um, it's 10 inches tall by 6 inches wide. Although when I uh, do workshops with students, I usually pick a size that is a, like a standard rug size. Gotcha. So much bigger, like two by four or two by three or something like that. Well, not not that large necessarily because these are we're working with a lot of small pieces and findings, right. and and you can put in here pieces that are that have. Um, I have sound on this, Her, uh, sorry, <laughs> this, you know, the everyone's in the house. So, um, I'm sorry, I just had a, I lost my, my train of thought. No what was, what was the You're talking about size? size? Like, yeah. what would a standard, like, rug size be for something like this? Oh, well, when I say standard, I mean by, I mean uh, proportions. So, I might do okay. a five by seven or a six by eight, but they're usually in terms of inches. There is a very large one uh, in building seven in the glass building that is three, three feet by um, five feet. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's got about 6,000 pieces of glass in it. Wow. Wow. And Huge. so Anita, where can people find you? 
Um, well, I have a website where you can see the different tapestry mosaic, some of the tapestries that I've made. Um, in particular, it's anitadamronart.com. And anitadamron.com is my main website. Um, I don't post to Facebook as much um, or Pinterest. I, I or uh, you know the, Instagram. The other, yeah, I I have the accounts, but I don't really post there very much. I usually just. <laughs> That's no. And problem. I teach a lot. I teach a lot of classes. I teach classes at the workhouse, and uh, you know it's just super fun when we all get together and make things Great. together. So I hope it I is. hope people are making things and doing something creative. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for jumping in to talk about your piece um, because it's just beautiful. The colors are awesome and, and yeah, it's, it's a great piece to have in our cherry blossom um, related art here. Okay, and then continuing to cherry blossoms, these are some more artists. Um, we have Sandy Martina, Wynne Jones, and Sue Ellen Black, and Dale Marhenka, who is our GLASS program director, he is going to share some information about these. Yeah, so anything, uh, so I noticed that Candy and Cheryl are on, so if they have any of their pieces here, they could always uh, chime in. So a lot of the uh, glass pieces we'll see, um, majority of them are fused uh, pieces of glass, so you'll have glass components. Um, you know, uh, if anybody's familiar with fused glass, basically it could be anywhere from like two to three firings on up to, you know, 18, 20 depending on how uh, complex of a uh, piece you want to create. You know, fused glass usually is a process where you're layering different colors of uh, glasses together. You can also um, uh, paint, you know, they use enamels, much like we would uh, for China painting on ceramics. Um, this piece here is a beveled piece of glass. You've got uh, beveled components on the exterior painting border. Glass. I'm sorry. Keep going, Dale. <laughs> I thought I heard somebody. Um, so you have beveled pieces of glass uh, here. And then uh, there in the middle, you know, her uh, colored panel there, the uh, botanical uh, portion of the image, you've got uh, different colored uh, pieces of fused glass. And, you know, fused glass, usually you'll fire anywhere from 14 to 1500 degrees, depending on what you're doing. You know, you go through a tack firing, which means you're getting some of your components just to stick together. And then you're coming back and perhaps putting another layer of glass over top of that and then doing another uh, fuse uh, where you're going to basically fuse those panels or pieces together. And then you come back for a full fuse, which means you're going to slump it. Um, so there's different ways of firing the pieces, but it's really, you know, you really have to have a good sense of color theory when you're working with uh, elements like this. You can't necessarily, you know, some of it you can, uh, do by on the fly but you know you'll notice that a lot of the pieces that we see here glass wise uh, folks uh, have a very good sense of color um, and as far as how they put their pieces together which is really uh, very nice this piece here like I believe that's another one of Sandy's um, that's a, a round disc and then she's got these uh, it's a branch with blossoms on it um, those are actually like, re Sandy tends to work with the uh, recycled uh, elements of uh, as far as glass is concerned. So you'll see a lot of scrap glass that she's uh, turned into uh, a full panel and then she'll fuse it together and then she'll uh, try to deform it somehow, either on a mold she's created or it could be a pre-manufactured mold, but a lot of times she branches out and tries to uh, create uh, various uh, shapes using uh, uh, handmade uh, molds. That she's created there and these are just little slump uh, blossoms that she's put there so it's you know you got one uh, these five uh, I, I'm not sure what word I want to use on that but these uh, shaped blossoms where she's put a another color glass and then these little dots now those dots are actually so there's three different elements of glass that were created there the dots were fused and then the um, the central part of the flower there is one other like star shape and then you've got the main blossom piece in the background so those are actually three pieces created first and then they're fused together cool so Dan, when you were saying that uh they need to have a glass artists need to have a good sense of color theory does that are you saying that like the glass colors can merge and create a different yeah so depending on temperature you know there's a lot of movement that can happen depending on what temperature they're firing to 
Um, so like we'll see some pieces later on here in a few minutes where they've used fret, um, which is this crushed glass to create the image. And so you have, you know, it's almost like you're a painter, depending on what state the glass is, you have to, you know, you have to really know your secondary, your, in your tertiary colors, you have to have a good sense of, uh, of what colors work well together and complement each other. Um, because they're already pre-manufactured pieces or panels of glass. It's not like they're creating the colors specifically themselves. Gotcha. They choose that color combination um, in order to create the image. Okay. And then this, I think, is, um, is that's, this Lynn Jones? Yeah, that's, it's, Candy, are you on? I'm pretty sure that's a Wynn piece. Okay. I that's, that's Wynn. That's Wynn. Okay, thanks, yeah. Candy. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you want to talk about Wynn's piece? Um, no, I'd better not because I'm not quite, I know it's borosilica. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is borosilica glass. So there's two types of glass. So when, let's, let's back up. So Wynn Jones is a flame worker. Um, you, the other term you might hear is, uh, is lamp working. Um, so that's where you have a tabletop torch and you're working with two uh, different COEs, what we call coefficient of expansion uh, glasses. One is soft glass um, because it takes a lower temperature slightly. And then you have a hard glass, which is what we call borosilicate. And that is, uh, requires a little bit of a hotter flame. Um, so what she's done here, she's using uh, borosilicate elements to create uh, basically a necklace, um, uh, not a pendant. I, what would you call that? I would call it a necklace, yeah. Well, besides, there's another term for it, but I'm, and the name's escaping me, so I apologize, guys. But there's basically probably five, six different types of uh, colored glasses there. And she's manipulated it oh, to create the image. Same here. Yeah. And then they, you know, they they basically will create these on uh, on the on the torch. You know, you have to anneal them, um, which means that you're basically controlling the rate of cooling that occurs in order for the piece to uh, basically survive. The glass will crack or become very fragile if it's not properly annealed. Oh, thank you for doing that, Mia. Yeah. Um, I'm getting older, so I can't see it as well. But um, you can see the texture now on the petals. So all that is done with various tools. They have these different tools they call like tweezers or what they call mashers. Um, so you're manipulating the glass to create the, uh, the object you know, itself. And then, you know, these are all, you know, basically like the central part of the uh, flower. That's one type of glass. And then you're adding by fusing or kind of melding the uh, petals into the central part of the flower there. So it's a, it, it's a pretty, pretty time consuming process. And you have a lot of accidents, you know, and like anything, you know, it, one of the hardest things about glass is it's very expensive medium to work with. Mm. So it's very common as a student, you know, you get uh, into this mode where everything you do, it has to come out perfect. If it doesn't, you're like, oh my God. But, you know, it's, it's, there is a lot of trial and error with this and you're going to have a lot of uh, mistakes happen as you go through the process. And sometimes yeah. you know, accents, accents are uh, fun and actually we learn from them, right? Yeah. But now this Dale, piece, yeah. Dale, the, um, what, what's really difficult on those pieces is that the joints have to be really secure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and getting the weight right and, and having the heat right at all angles. Um, and uh, making sure there aren't any acute angles on any of those is so having all her angles there and then trying to get rid of them to make sure it's a it's a solid piece is pretty difficult yeah the fragility of it is pretty amazing so um if you guys you know once we get back to where people can come visit it be awesome you guys can see the process by uh like something like this that element on the left um, it's not uncommon that people will create like what we call bridges um, between the various uh, el protrude, protruded uh, elements in order to help brace them as you're going through the process. Um, so it's multiple steps here. Um, the piece on the right, Candy, can you talk about that element on the right of that image? The, her bird? Yeah, the bird. That's a, that's a hollow piece um, and she's blown it and then birds are a lot of fun. Um, or that turns into all sorts of elements, turns into dragons, um, de just depending on how, um, how, what your whim is when you're, <laughs> and the colors that end up uh, showing up. But um, uh, yeah, that's a hollow 
piece. She's blowing. Yeah, so she started with a She's tube. And, and, and you think she has, what, two or three different colors there on that tube? Um, she has striped it and yeah, there's a couple of colors there and then she's added wings to the bird, of course, on the body. Um, <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, great. it's it's very whimsical. She does, she does really neat. The birds are fun. So yeah, Dale, yeah. on a second Saturday, uh, would, would people, when we're able to actually go to the workhouse, would people find the glass artists like actually demoing any of this kind of stuff? Yeah, pretty much campus wide, you know, it varies from building to building. But one thing that's pretty nice here is that, you know, the artists are very generous with their time. And you'll find that they're, you know, we try to get them to demonstrate various techniques uh, during Second Saturdays that you may not see during the course of the, you know, any given week. Um, so this is their time to kind of like promote uh, what it is that they, their craft, so to speak, uh, fine art and fine craft. And, uh, you know, like even this piece here, you know, you might you might come through the glass house on a second Saturday and you might see Wynn or, or Candy or Cheryl or, or Kathy or any of the other uh, flame working artists uh, making uh, various elements that they're going to use to put together a final sculptural piece or even, you know, a functional object like a necklace or earrings or, or uh, any type of uh, bracelet, things of that nature. So yes, we try our best to make sure that we always have some kind of visual uh, activity going on as far as showing people uh, the different processes and techniques that we have available. To them. Um, and I believe this piece is from Sue Ellen Black. No, no this is actually Wynn. Oh, this is, is it Wynn? Okay. Yeah, this is Wynn Jones. Okay. And this is her cherry blossom tree that's in the hallway. So you'll see this right next to the to her door to her studio. Okay. And, How big is this piece? This is a three feet by three feet. Wow, wow, awesome. Yeah. And is it, um, is it, it doesn't look like it's mounted on anything else. It just looks like it's, you know. It's hung on a couple of nails. Um, it's, 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 it's actually, nails. yeah, it's, so it's a metal, it's uh, mixed media. So you've got metal and um, glass components. Okay. On this, uh, the blossoms are the, um, the majority of the glass uh, okay. pieces involved in this. It's a really beautiful piece. The picture really doesn't do it justice. It, it's a hard one to kind of photograph. You have to kind of see that in person. Yeah. Um, uh, because the one thing that was hard about that image, uh, getting that image, like when I did the video tour the other day, is the hallway is not very deep or wide, <laughs> I should say. So getting back far enough to get a good shot of it was, was hard. Yeah. But um, if you really, I would, if you get a chance, once we reopen, definitely come back uh, to see this piece, if it's still there. Hopefully she uh, is able to sell that, but. Well, Dale, thank you so much for talking about the uh, Cherry Blas Blossom Glass artist. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I did anybody justice there, but. You did. <laughs> we tried our best. <laughs> We're all trying our best here. That's all we can do right now. Well, um, okay, so the last thing we have are a couple of pieces from Patricia uh, McMahon Rice. Um, her medium that she's doing a lot of this day are paintings on copper. And so she's got some Corona series uh, while she's in quarantine. And here's a couple of these. And then we've got a quick video that she did of her quarantine space. And there's one more. And so then here's our video of her Hi, space. I'm an artist from Building 6, and obviously I'm not in my studio. I'm actually quarantining in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. You can see the palm tree out my window, and I'm in my... Desk. Can you guys hear that? And this is my mm -hmm. studio away from home. So I've got a little travel easel, and I've been working on a series of birds on copper. This is the most recent one. It's a painting of a cardinal right there. Using the computer to... Be on that. There's a picture. Um, and my quarantine series is going to be primarily birds on copper. So this is one of the paintings that I've completed. This heron who was photographed right out here at the, my parents' home in the lagoon. And this is a goldfinch. And both of these paintings are available. And just contact me. You can find me through the workhouse. You can find me through Instagram, Patricia McMahon Rice. And you can see one of my most recent goldfinch paintings is on American Art Collector's Instagram page. 
So welcome to Second Saturday, and hope you enjoy. <laughs> yeah, so great. Everybody heard that she's in Charleston, South Carolina? Yeah. Um, so that's it, folks. Um, again, all of this will be online with more uh, things that we didn't have a chance to get to. Um, we'll be back in May with another virtual second Saturday um, because I don't believe we're opening before then. Uh, and we've also got virtual cabarets from our performing arts program. We've got four virtual exhibits online for celebrating clay. Um, so check those out on our website. Um, we've got online mini art of movement classes on our website. And as Dale can attest to, we are all working really hard behind the scenes to hopefully bring some online classes to you. Yeah, so in a couple of weeks, we hope to be starting uh, classes in uh, AOM, uh, culinary, music, and then uh, ceramics, and hopefully uh, one or two in drawing and painting. Awesome. But uh, it's a, uh, every, everybody's getting uh, their feet wet, so to speak, with this process um, of uh, having to uh, videotape themselves and what angles to use, make sure they don't, uh, you know, like put their head down awesome. like this when they're trying to talk. So everybody's uh, got a bit of a learning curve with it, but uh, look out for uh, online virtual content as far as courses uh, within uh, at least, uh, well, no more than two weeks, hopefully within a week. Yeah. We've got to train some folks on how to use the uh, various format uh, platforms. So we'll be using Rizuku for our um, pre-recorded content, and then we'll be using Zoom for the live content. Awesome. And so be sure to check our, for our emails, um, follow us on Instagram at Workhouse Arts or mm -hmm. Facebook at Workhouse Arts Center or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Workhouse Arts Center, because all of that stuff, um, uh, all of the virtual things we're doing are on those mediums. The Rizuku online classes will be a separate thing, but we'll be announcing those through Facebook and Instagram and our emails and our website. So, Thank you everybody for joining us and um, having uh, fun in this experiment tonight. <laughs> so uh, if we can, Mina, we have a second here. So there was a question from uh, one of the participants, Liz, and it was for Nadine. Okay. And she was asking if you're associated with the Byzantine Arts Center in DC. No, that's, um, that's run by Colette Ma um, Kalismaki. Uh, she has, um, that uh, is a group of DC artists mm -hmm. and I'm here in Virginia by myself. So, but uh, yeah, um, there's actually more than 26 iconographers in the area. Uh, at one point we had an iconographers guild um, before we all just got real busy, um, but uh, everybody specializes in different things. The Byzantine arts, um, I think there's a, a, a wood artist and um, it's a variety of things. I know that she's not down in DC anymore. I think she's up at a coffee house. So um, I know of them and I know some of them, um, but no, I'm uh, kind of uh, freelance of my own. And uh, Jan uh, Forsyth uh, was asking if, could you bring up that cherry blossom tree one more time, Mina? Yes, let's see here. I kind of like this. It's interesting. This is fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So on the. Yep. So she, if you could do a close up on the bird. Oh yeah. Let's see here. She was interested in seeing what the bird was actually all about. I guess yeah. It's probably well, as close like as you'll get. Metal. Mm -hmm. There's two. Yeah. And there's another. I think that's probably as close as we'll be able to get, Jan. Yeah. Any other questions, Dale? No, that was it. I think everybody was very appreciative of us uh, doing this and it is a lot of fun and we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your lives and uh, participating. Definitely, we're very grateful for your presence this evening and your support of the workhouse overall. And yeah, and we hope you all stay safe and uh, healthy. Yes, thank you everybody, have a great evening. You too. Bye, thank you. Bye -bye.